Zinc is a very important nutrient for all crops. So today we're going to talk a little about soil tests, application, and you know when it comes to what does zinc actually do in the plant, it's got a lot of different functions, but the one that is top of mind for me right now at this time of year and early in the spring is frost protection. If you have better levels of zinc in the plant, you have a plant that's just a little bit more frost tolerant. First of all, what levels of zinc do you need out in your field? Well, I would look at soil tests as a great way to start this process. Taking good soil tests and including micronutrients such as zinc is very important. Make sure you're getting a complete soil test done. That way we know what's going on out there because as you're going to hear in just a second, we do compare zinc levels to other nutrients such as phosphorus and we'd like to see where those ratios are at. All right, so really what we're typically shooting for, now this all depends on your soil test. So I'll just talk about our soil test we're using, which is Midwest Labs, and I'll go either the Olson test, which is in high pH soil, or the P1 or weak Bray test. We're usually looking for a 10 to one ratio. So if I've got, let's say, 50 parts per million of available phosphorus, I'd like to have five parts per million of available zinc. If you don't have that, you get that ratio out of whack. We want to be somewhere in that 8 to 1, 10 to 1 kind of ratio. Let's say we're in the 4 to 1 ratio, or maybe we're 20 to 1 or 30 to 1. What happens is our yields start going down, especially in corn. But zinc is very important in soybeans, in wheat, in any crop that's out there. It's just that corn typically takes the most. Well, and that's where farmers are applying zinc, and maybe it's the same thing on your farm. You're going out there with a quart of zinc, throwing it in the furrow, and you say, well, I got my needs met for this corn crop. And if you're raising 200 bushel corn or less, and you're able to extract 100% of that zinc and get it into your crop, you're about right. That's what that crop needs. It needs about two tenths of a pound of zinc. At least that's what it's going to remove. I don't care about all that. I look at your whole rotation. And if you say, well, I plant corn this year and I plant soybeans the next year and then I'm back to corn again. Okay, well, how much zinc are you applying for your soybeans? And when I ask that question, I would say 99% of the time I get a blank stare. And finally, a farmer will say, well, I'm not putting any on my soybeans. I'm just doing it on the corn. If that's the case and you're in a crop rotation and you're only putting zinc on the corn, you're going backwards and your levels in your soil are gradually going down and down and down. And that's not good if you're shooting for high yields. Now most of the time we and just about everybody else out there is using a little bit of liquid zinc with a planter and that's fine. I'm not saying that's bad. But what I am saying here is let's say you've got 100 parts per million or 80 parts per million of phosphorus and you go, whoa, I'm really getting hurt because my zinc level's at 2. Um, yeah, you got to get that up to 8 or 10 now. So you can do it very inexpensively with zinc sulfate. Zinc sulfate is super cheap and it's very easy to spread. Now, I don't usually suggest you mix it in with other fertilizers like urea or MAP or DAP, because what could potentially happen is it could settle out or it could rise to the top. It, it all depends on the formulation and what you're doing here. But where I'm going with this is either spread it all by itself on your farm and spread it using variable rate technology, or have it in a separate compartment. So for example, if you have a fertilizer spreader that has two compartments or three compartments, use one of those for the zinc sulfate. All right, Brian said a pretty high number there for parts per million zinc reading on a soil test. And you may be thinking, wait a minute, I'm at two and he's saying I need to go to eight or 10 potentially if I've got high phosphorus levels out there. Yeah, that is what he said. And you're starting to run the numbers in your head, man, that's gonna cost me some money. Yep, it's gonna be an investment out in your field. But again, how much are you actually removing each year with the crops you're growing? Not much, often less than a pound. So if you're putting out 10 pounds or 20 pounds or something like that, you've got enough for 10 years or 20 years or more. So that's a good thing. Now, as you're doing this, you may say, I don't know if I wanna invest that much money across my whole farm. I totally agree with you. I would say start small. Maybe zinc isn't your yield limiting factor, and maybe we're just flat wrong. Maybe what's happened on our farm and other farmers that we've worked with isn't gonna be the same for your soil. The best way to find out is take a small part of your farm and just try some different things. And maybe say, okay, I'll move up one part per million on most of the farm on this field, and then on another spot, I'm gonna go up to whatever they say that I should be at. Maybe it's four parts, eight parts per million, 10 parts per million, and just see what happens in a strip or two, if you're wrong. 
what's going to happen? Well, you put too much zinc out and it's just going to take you some time. You're going to have to apply zinc there for quite a while and you'll eventually draw it back out of the soil. If you put it across your whole farm and you don't know if this is your real problem, now you've spent a whole bunch of money, perhaps wastefully. So I don't recommend putting it on thousands of acres. Try a small amount first and learn. Okay, and I do recommend putting it on thousands of acres. This is a proven thing if you are super low. Okay, so we're not saying, oh, everybody needs to be at 10 parts per million. Again, you really have to look at the phosphorus to zinc and maybe some other nutrient ratios in your field. But the important thing to understand here is zinc is very much like phosphorus in that they don't move in soil. So if you lay them on the soil surface and do no tillage at all, you do not place the zinc down or the phosphorus down, the zinc and phosphorus will not move down in the soil. Maybe after a decade, they're down an inch. Okay, is that where you want these? No, get them down in the soil. So if you aren't going to do tillage, let's say you're a no-tiller or maybe a strip tiller, uh, that's fine. I'm not saying there's anything bad with that, but now you have to place them down in the ground. Do not broadcast them out there because otherwise it's going to be decades before you get them really down into the root zone at four to eight inches deep where you would like them. And that has been one of the nice things with the in-furrow or two by two applications. At least you're getting it down a little ways into the soil. The one downside that I've seen though is you've got to be fussy what form of zinc you're using. I really prefer zinc sulfate forms for safety compared to something like ammoniated zinc and also for mixing with other things. It just mixes so much better. And then the last thing is for microbials. If you're putting microbials either on your seed or in your furrow, Keep the zinc away from it unless you know it's a proven safer source like a zinc sulfate, for example. Well, zinc is tremendously important to raising better yields on your farm, but so is weed control. Can you identify our Weed of the Week?